Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Later, we'll explore some of the Jacksonville Historical Society's archives. But first, a fascinating exhibit at MOSH, the Museum of Science and History on 100 Years of Jacksonville Architecture. And we welcome Chrissy Leonard and David Engdahl from MOSH. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having pleasure. us. pleasure. This is a fantastic uh, exhibit. And I have not seen it, but I've talked to you all about it and looked at the uh, brochure. Mm -hmm. I'll be there uh, very soon before mm -hmm. it closes. Uh, just give us basically, Christy, uh, the concept, what you were trying to present here and what people will see. Sure. Um, it all started with AIA, the American Institute of Architects. They were celebrating their 100th year in Florida. And um, they came to us with an idea to do an exhibit and um, it was a great idea, we loved it, so we, we moved ahead with it. And um, the concept of the exhibit is really 100 years of architecture in our city, um, but really the architecture um, reflects what was going on in our history during that time. Mm -hmm. And David, um, the 100 years period is starting right after the Great Fire. Right, that was a key event in Jacksonville's history, certainly architecturally, because the whole city was virtually destroyed, uh, except for one or two buildings. And so the city started over, and they started off with uh, a lot of enthusiasm and accomplished uh, some, some uh, new building in such a short order that we'd uh, be hard pressed to replicate today. It's amazing when you think about how quickly uh, uh, building got done right after the fire. There was a real determination to get the city going again. Right. The, the city that burned down was mostly wood frame, mm -hmm. which was typical of what happened during the uh, 1800s. And the new city took advantage of new technologies and steel and concrete, which allowed buildings to, to, to be higher and uh, uh, just new techniques, uh, faster construction, more fireproof construction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it made the city starting in 1901 uh, very much different than the city that burned down. And it was a great opportunity for architects. The one we know a lot about, of course, is Clutho, who uh, heard about this fire in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, decided it was an opportunity. Yeah. And other architects must have seen the uh, Opportunity yeah, there too. were a number of architects that uh, really took the opportunity, and that those were at the um, um, at the request of the the mayor uh, at that time, who who uh, really led the charge to get the city going again. I mean, the city wasn't down; it was it was rising again, and mm -hmm. he led the charge and invited a lot of architects to come into the city to to uh, design new buildings very quickly. And uh, Maybe nowadays it, it takes longer, maybe there's more red tape, I'm not sure what, but, but we do have a hard time imagining buildings uh, going up that quickly nowadays. So, yes, yeah, certainly with the technology that was available at that time, but uh, like I said, the, the whole city was behind. There was no question that the city would be rebuilt. And over the years, over this hundred years, we have a whole lot of different kinds of architecture. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's take a look uh, briefly on your laptop here, Christy. Uh, sure. Some of the. Uh, so this is the view as you're coming up to the stairs in the museum on the third floor. Um, you'll enter the exhibit. You'll get a little snapshot of what is in store for you. And then um, the first section that you walk in through the exhibit, um, we speak to the Great Fire of 1901 that we've that we've been talking about. Um, the graphics are really amazing in this section and the photographs that you see really give you an idea of the complete destruction that our city went through. Which is just amazing if, some, if people haven't uh, paid attention to it. Uh, Absolutely. It, it, it did destroy the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the Jacksonville Historical Society is in a building that was spared, mm -hmm. but there weren't that many buildings that were spared. That's right. Okay. And then um, the section, the next section that you come through, um, it's called The City Rises Again. And this is where we really start to talk about all the architects that came down to Jacksonville, um, Clutho being one of them. And this is a piece from one of his buildings that is no longer um, standing in Jacksonville. But um, Yeah, unfortunately, we have lost a lot of, uh, uh, a number of Clutho buildings, mm -hmm. but there are some uh, major ones. Mm -hmm. the, the city Hall, our, our City Hall, which was a department store, 
the mm -hmm. St. James building is maybe the, uh, the major one that's yes. been preserved. Absolutely. And um, Wayne Wood supplied us with um, many of the architectural elements that are in this exhibit. Mm -hmm. So it really um, makes the, the exhibit come to life when you see these. And then moving into the next section, we call it boom and bust. So we're really talking about the boom of the 1920s and then the crash of the stock market in the 1930s and the depression. So you see the architecture in Jacksonville rising, 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 you know, a lot going on and then all of a sudden it crashes mm -hmm. and not a whole lot of building permits being issued. Yes, <laughs> right, we're, we're familiar with that Yes. in recent years. <laughs> And then um, we get to the war and afterwards, of course, World War II um, was huge for our city. So many people um, did so many different things to help in the war effort. Um, many um, military families lived here in Jacksonville, and so um, that's really what our city was all about during those years. And that was the beginning of uh, something that is very important uh, nowadays, Jacksonville's connection with the military, particularly the uh -huh. Navy. That's right. And, and there are quite a few buildings built during that time period that are very nice architectural uh, uh, buildings. There are some on Naval Air Station that are just really great architectural buildings. Not just your traditional barracks. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next section of the exhibit is mid-century development. And um, this is where you start to see some of the, the larger, taller buildings. Um, we have a video that plays in this section of the exhibit um, that was put together by John Wrightshammer and Wayne Wood that um, features William Morgan, Taylor Hardwick, and Bob Broward. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Wayne has been on this show talking about that, uh, mm -hmm. those three architects and that period of architecture. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, they, they buildings were which are just now becoming eligible to become really historic yeah. because mm -hmm. they're now yeah. over 50 years old. Yeah, they, they were uh, key architects during that mid-century period and their, their work is very prototypical of that what is now a, a general style. Mm -hmm. And this is another photograph from the mid-century development um, section of the exhibit. Um, you really start to see the city expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. that, that era is the largest in the whole exhibition. Mm -hmm. it, it spans 25 years, whereas the others span uh, 20 years. And there was just so much going on during that period from 1955 uh, uh, through 1980. Just mm -hmm. an amazing amount of work. And then the last section of the exhibit we have titled Continuing Urban and Suburban Expansion. Um, so really you're coming up um, through the 90s and the 2000s and um, seeing continuous growth. Yeah. And uh, I, David, you mentioned before we started the show that, uh, that people might not have thought architecture was that interesting, but this, this exhibit parallels what was going on in Jacksonville from the fire on, on through today. Yeah, we tried to make the, the exhibit reflect a history of Jacksonville over a hundred years and the influence on that history. Some of that as local, uh, some of it was regional, uh, and some of it was national, like the wars, like the depression. So mm -hmm. all these things had an influence on the architecture of, of the period, and that's reflected in the building. So it's really a, a story of the history of Jacksonville over the last hundred years, supported by the architecture of that uh, each respective time. And uh, you have uh, a lot of neighborhoods with uh, various kinds of architecture, don't you, uh, all over Jacksonville? Right, yeah, particularly in the, in the last era from 1980 through today, uh, development was everywhere. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, you know, up till there, a lot of the development was in the downtown area after 1980 it was everywhere, so that era reflects a lot of residential architecture that is far from downtown. Uh, the, the dominant uh, school of architecture, I guess, would be uh, Clutho and Perry School. Uh, and, and you, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that, that seems to have... Yeah, that, that was a highlight, and, uh, and uh -huh. as I mentioned, the uh, mid-century, uh, the three mid-century yeah. architects uh, that uh, really made their imprint on uh, on Jacksonville, so uh, a lot of the buildings you see are those uh, fingerprints. Mm -hmm. 
And Harry, I hear from our visitors all the time um, when I'm walking through the exhibit, um, whether they're younger, older, teenagers, they see these photographs and sometimes people remember, they'll say, oh, I remember I used to go into that building or, you know, a child will say, you know, what was that? Tell me about that. And they're really yeah. intrigued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was the, there was a we uh, historical society recently did an exhibit at City Hall about the history of that building, mm -hmm. and of course people who have been in Jacksonville for a while remember going there to see Santa Claus and mm -hmm. other things when it was May Cohen's. Yeah. yeah, that was on the at the opening reception. That was one of the most rewarding things to me uh, was to how the people related to the individual buildings. Mm -hmm. And there are a tremendous number of buildings included in this exhibit. It is, it is, it, it's not an exhibit you can go through in five or ten minutes. It includes some uh, buildings that uh, are still with us and that have been preserved and some buildings that have been lost. Right, right. Yeah, the, uh, the era of the Great Fire, um, it features some buildings that were very nice buildings that were lost in the fire. So it, those buildings kind of predate the fire, uh, but we wanted to include some that were lost and the one or two that survived, uh, and then the rest of it was start over. I mean, it was, it was very much, the city was very much devastated uh, by the fire. There wasn't much left. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, are there other people that we should be uh, mentioning, Christy? That th this seems like a very ambitious uh, exhibit, and you, you mentioned Wayne Wood. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely, we had um, probably about 35 folks that helped us with this wow. exhibit. Um, Dave was incredibly instrumental in pulling all of this together. Mm -hmm. um, we. Um, referred to him as our project director because he really kept everyone going, um, kept the project on time and on budget. So, um, but yes, it was amazing. We had about 35 um, people. Um, most of them were architects who have jobs and they volunteered their time to do this exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, they researched, they designed, um, they worked really hard on it. and. Um, I, I think we've tallied the volunteer hours and we're up to at least, I think, 1,800 right now. So, mm -hmm. a yeah, lot we, of work. And we engaged the younger architects and some of the, the leaders of the different eras had not been in Jacksonville but a few years, so they learned a great deal mm -hmm. about the history of Jacksonville just going through the process of research. I personally uh, learned an awful lot about the city, the history of the city. I've been here 40 years, but I learned an awful lot about the city uh, just going through the process. It, it, so it was a real learning experience. And no matter how, uh, no, no matter when people are seeing this, they can still go to Marsh and see this exhibit because it continues right. through September? Yes, it'll be up through September, so in all, an entire year. Mm -hmm. So, how does, uh, how does Marsh decide what to uh, do? I mean, you, you do some very interesting things. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, um, it's, you know, every exhibit is different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we come up with things as, um, as a staff unit and we decide, you know, listen, we think this topic is important. It's what our community wants to see, so we'll bring in an exhibit in based on that. And then other times we have um, outside groups that will come to us with great opportunities and great ideas for exhibits. I like the dinosaurs. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it, it's a little bit of everything, but um, this exhibit in particular um, really wouldn't be possible you know, without the volunteers and our sponsors as well. Um, Haskell was the lead mm -hmm. sponsor for this exhibit and um, they encouraged um, a lot of the other architects in the community to help support the exhibit as well. Uh, hours of operation for Marsh, briefly? Uh. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 5. Friday, we're open late, 10 to 8 p.m. Saturday, 10 to 6, and Sunday, 12 to 5. And this exhibit continues uh, through September? Through September. Well, uh, David Engdahl and Christy Leonard from Marsh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And next on the Jacksonville History Show, we explore the archives of the Jacksonville Historical Society. Stay with us. The Jacksonville Historical Society, preserving your city's history, protecting your city's treasures, advocating the restoration of Jacksonville landmarks, archiving a century of historical documents, collecting rare photographs, tens of thousands, 
Creating the Merrill Museum House, piece by piece. Restoring Old St. Andrew's Church. Receiving Florida Historical Society's top honors. Publishing historical books, elegantly crafted. Producing video histories, dramatically told. Educating our citizens for decades. Enlightening the generations to come. Sponsoring tonight's special television presentation and offering you the opportunity to become a part of Jacksonville history. Call 665-0064, visit jackshistory.com and become a member of the Jacksonville Historical Society, celebrating 80 years serving our community.